Tracy Jedrzejczak and I'm a lactation consultant. When it comes to breast pumps, there is a lot of misinformation out there. This is especially true if you're looking for a wearable pump and it can make the process of picking one even more challenging. You've probably heard some of these myths before. Wearable pumps won't give you as much milk. Wearable pumps will hurt. They can't be your only pump. They're only for working moms or they're really expensive. So we're here to bust some of these most commonly held myths and give you the facts you need to choose the wearable pump that's right for you. There's a myth that wearable pumps are less efficient than traditional pumps, meaning they won't remove enough milk from your breasts and may damage your milk supply. The truth is, not all pumps are created equal. Choosing a high quality pump and making sure that it fits will give you the best chance of making the most milk. Focusing on the fit of your wearable pump is one of the best ways to ensure that you get great output. When we talk about fit, we're referring to the way that the flange, a cone-shaped funnel, seals over your nipple and breast. A good fit is snug, but not so snug that you feel pain or discomfort. Suction strength is also critical here. You'll want to pick a wearable with multiple levels of hospital strength suction, and ideally one that makes it possible to customize this suction per breast. The truth is, not all pumps are created equal. Choosing a high quality pump and making sure that it fits will give you the best chance of making the most milk. There's a myth that wearable pumps are unsafe and have suction that will hurt or harm your breasts and nipples. The truth is that many wearable pumps have FDA clearance and have gone through clinical tests and trials to prove their safety and efficacy. Beyond these trials, many wearables are designed to put safety and comfort at the forefront. Start by looking for a pump with multiple customizable levels of suction. This ensures that you can start slow and low and work up to a level that feels good. A setting that's too high can cause nipple pain and damage. When you're doing your research, you should also make a point to learn about features like the flange design. Look for brands that actually talk about their design and product decisions. There are so many cheap knockoffs out there that sacrifice quality for cost, and these pumps may indeed hurt, but this isn't true for all wearables. Any pump, whether it's traditional wearable, portable, or handheld, can hurt or cause damage if it's used incorrectly. If you prioritize quality, you'll be on the right track. There's a myth that wearables are fine for occasional use, but that moms need a traditional pump as their primary pump. The truth is that a wearable pump can absolutely be your primary pump. The most important thing is to make sure you're choosing one that's built with hospital grade suction for maximum output and designed to keep your breasts safe. Comfort is also essential when looking for a primary pump. Look for a pump with a motor that sits inside the pump instead of on top of it for more even weight distribution and a flange designed to prevent nipple abrasion. You'll also want multiple options for flange sizing because pumping isn't one size fits all. At the end of the day, optimal comfort and output are what lead to pumping success. And lots of wearables can deliver on this. There's a myth that wearable pumps are only a back to work essential. The truth is, wearable pumps can be useful long before your maternity leave is over and whether or not you stay at home or commute to an office each day. Pumps can be a great way to deal with underproduction in the early days, and a wearable pump can offer unparalleled flexibility if you need to pump when newly postpartum, especially if you have a baby in the NICU or need to pump while juggling both newborn and toddler care at home. And even if you're not struggling with milk supply, the convenience that wearable pumps offer can make it easier to pump more often and increase your chances of breastfeeding for longer. This is true if you're commuting and leading meetings, and also true if you're at home wrangling kids all day. Anything that can make postpartum life easier while also helping you feed your baby is worth investing in. This includes wearables. There's a myth that wearable pumps are unaffordable. And while wearable pumps often have a higher price tag than traditional pumps, most of them are covered by insurance. Since 2010, insurance plans have been required to cover breast pumps. Just like traditional pumps, you'll find wearable pumps on insurance platforms like Airflow, which make it easy to browse pumps that are covered. And you can also navigate the reimbursement process through the brand that you're making a pump purchase from. Additionally, you can put your HSA and FSA funds towards wearable pump purchases. Many brands also offer payment plans so that you can split the cost across multiple payments. While not all wearable pumps are covered entirely, moms often end up getting up to 50% off the full price of their pump. Many will also tell you that the freedom they get in return is priceless. We've gone through a lot of myths, that wearable pumps won't give you as much milk, that they'll damage your breasts, that they can't be your primary pump, that they're only for returning to work, and that they're unaffordable. If there's anything to take away from this myth busting, let it be this. Do your research when you're getting ready to pump. It's the best way to make decisions based on facts, not misconceptions. Don't forget to subscribe for more pumping information.